Hey everyone, welcome back. Ready for another deep dive? Always. What are we tackling today? Well, today it's all about low carb diets. They're everywhere you look. Right? Yeah, for sure. I feel like everyone's got an opinion on them. Exactly. So we dug into some research, got some good info, and now we're going to sift through it all, kind of cut through all the noise and see what the science actually, you know, says about low carb eating. It should be interesting. There's definitely a lot of hype out there. Oh yeah, for sure. So let's just jump right in. Where should we start? Benefits, maybe. Yeah, benefits are always a good place to begin. Got to give people what they want. Okay, so benefit number one, and this is probably the one everyone thinks of first, weight loss. Yep, that's the big one. And the research does back it up, yeah. especially that initial water weight loss. Right. Like, that yeah. could be super motivating, right? Mm -hmm. Seeing those numbers on the scale go down, even if it's mostly water weight. Absolutely. It can be a real psychological boost to keep people going. For sure. Really? Okay, so weight loss, check. But there's more, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Way more to it than just weight loss, like blood sugar control. Low-carb diets are often linked to better blood sugar regulation, which is, you know, huge for people dealing with insulin resistance or type 2 diabetes. Yeah, the research we looked at actually showed some pretty impressive results in that area, like actually stabilizing those blood sugar levels. Exactly. And then there's the impact on cholesterol and heart health. Yeah. Our source mentioned studies where... Um, Low carb diets actually led to like an increase in good cholesterol, that HDL cholesterol. And at the same time, a decrease in triglycerides, which are those, you know, not so good fats in your blood. Yeah. So that's a win win for your heart, right? And there's even more. The source talked about reduced appetite, increased energy, and even mental clarity. Like, sign me up. Uh huh. Right. I mean, it's not magic, but it does sound pretty good. <laughs> but there's a reason for all these benefits, right? It all comes down to how low-carb diets affect insulin and how our bodies use energy. Okay, yeah, explain that. So basically, when you cut way back on carbs, your body has to find a new main source of fuel, right? Right. It's got to get energy from somewhere. Exactly. So it switches to burning fat for fuel. And that's where ketosis comes in that metabolic state everyone talks about. Okay, so ketosis, that's when your body's running on fat and lit of carbs. Exactly. And that's where a lot of these positive effects come from. Interesting. Okay, so we've talked a lot about the good stuff, the potential benefits, but got to be real, it's not all perfect, right? Our research mentioned some downsides too, and I think it's important to talk about those. Totally agree. It's all about balance, right? Presenting the full picture. Yep, exactly. So what are some of the potential downsides we need to be aware of? Well, the one everyone's heard of, I think, is the keto flu. Oh, yeah. Keto flu. What exactly is that? So it's basically a bunch of symptoms that some people get when they first start a low-carb diet and really cut those carbs drastically. We're talking headaches, fatigue, you know, some people even get nauseous. Yikes. Sounds rough. Yeah. Not fun. It's kind of like your body's way of freaking out a little, you know, because it's so used to running on carbs and then boom, no more carbs. So like carb withdrawal, basically. Makes sense. Yeah, something like that. And the good news is it usually passes within a few days. Okay, good. That's good to hear. But it's not just the keto flu though, right? Right. There are other potential issues to watch out for. What else did our research mention? Digestive issues. Some people end up with constipation because they're not getting enough fiber, especially if they're not being careful about replacing those carbs with, you know, high fiber veggies and stuff. Yeah, that makes sense. Fiber is key. And then some people experience bloating, especially if they go from like not eating many veggies to suddenly eating tons of them to replace all the carbs they used to eat. Oh, yeah, that makes sense, too. <laughs> Your body needs time to adjust, I guess. Totally. And another thing to keep in mind is the potential for nutrient deficiencies. Right. Yeah, that's a big one. Mm -hmm. Our source mentioned B vitamins and magnesium specifically. Yep. Those are important. When you cut out a major food group like carbs, you got to make sure you're not missing out on key nutrients. It's all about planning, you know. Uh -huh. Make sure you're getting those nutrients from other sources like leafy greens, nuts, seeds, that kind of thing. Good point. Planning is key. And speaking of things we need, what about electrolytes? Oh, electrolytes. Super important on a low-carb diet. Yeah, the source mentioned that electrolyte imbalance can happen. And that can cause fatigue, muscle cramps, even dizziness. Definitely. It's because when you cut carbs, your body loses water weight and you lose electrolytes along with that water. Makes sense. So staying hydrated is crucial, especially in those first few days or weeks. Absolutely. You've got to replenish those electrolytes. Okay, so it seems like with low-carb diets, there are some 
awesome potential benefits, but also some things to be cautious about, right? Exactly. It's not a free ride. You know, there are trade-offs. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So what's the bottom line here for our listeners who might be thinking about trying a low-carb diet? Honestly, knowledge is power. If this is something you're thinking about, do your homework. Talk to your doctor, maybe a registered dietitian. Make sure you have all the info and can approach it in a way that's healthy for you. I love that. Couldn't agree more. Do your research, talk to the experts, and make informed decisions about your health. Exactly. It's your body, your health. Okay. So big takeaway, do your research. Yeah. And also, as we talked about, it's not just about cutting carbs. It's about what you're replacing them with. Absolutely. You know, nutrient-dense foods, non-starchy veggies, healthy fats, quality protein. That's what's going to keep you feeling good and make this whole thing sustainable. 100%. Well, this has been a fascinating deep dive. Thanks for all the insights. My pleasure. Always fun to chat about this stuff. It really has been. But it leaves me thinking, you know, we've talked about the short-term stuff, but what about long-term? Can you really live a low-carb life like forever? Does it mess with your metabolism or something? That's something for everyone to ponder. Hmm. That is a good question. Well, we'll have to save that for another deep dive. But for now, thanks for joining us, everyone. See you next time. See ya.